Hello, so today I'm going to talk about how to set up any of the particle systems that you find in my shop or from anywhere else for your VR chat avatar. So my booth store has a lot of free particle systems and if you download one you'll find a zip file with a Unity package as well as some usage guidelines and if you ex open the Unity package in Unity it'll have everything you need in order to follow this tutorial. So I've already opened the uh, cherry blossom particles right here. You'll see there are a couple different variants. And I'm going to start by dragging it into my scene and positioning it where I want on my avatar. So in the hierarchy, this represents uh, all of the bones of your avatar. And in order to understand how your particle system is going to attach, you have to understand what a parent-child relationship is. So in our case, if I drag these particles into the hierarchy and I put them under the hips, these particles are now a child of the hips, meaning they will follow any of the movement that the hips make They'll follow the rotation, they'll follow the scale. So if I m move the hips, the particles move with them. In this case, I want the particles to follow my left arm. So I'm going to put them under the left arm, and then I'm going to position them to my left arm, making sure that the position is correct from all angles. So next, we're going to record animations of the two states that we want our particles to be in, on and off. So when you're animating, it's always good practice to make a clone of your model because, uh, first of all, it provides you with a backup. But second of all, if you animate on the main model, it will often cause irreversible changes and you don't want that to happen. So I'm going to just duplicate this and drag it off to the side. And the cool thing is, is since these two models are identical, any animations that we make on this model will easily transfer over to this one later. So now's a great time to show you the windows that we're going to need in order to finish the rest of this project. If you go into Windows at the top of your screen, we're going to need to find the animator and the animation window. So here's our animation window. I'm just going to drag this down here. And here is our animator window, and it should appear up there. So with your clone model selected, and while inside the animation tab, we're going to create a new animation clip. And I'm going to call it Particles Off. Okay, so to create our animation clip, we're going to hit this little red record button. And what the record button does is it saves any changes that you make while it is active as part of the animation. So we're going to click it. We're going to click on our particle system. The parent of our particle system, I should say. And in the inspector, uncheck this box in order to disable it. And you'll notice when we disable this parent, all of the children get disabled as well. And you'll notice that a new keyframe appears down here in the animation. So now we can turn off record and repeat similar steps for an on animation. In order to create a new animation clip, you can click on this drop down and create new clip and name it something descriptive. Now you can delete the clone because we're done using it. Now we're going to create the menus that will actually control the toggling of our particles. We have three things we need to make. An FX controller, an expressions menu, and a set of expressions parameters. Our FX controller is definitely the easiest. All we have to do is right click, click create, and find animator controller. And for good measure, I'm going to name this FX controller. Now we need our expressions menu and our expressions parameters. For the expressions menu and parameters, we're going to duplicate the existing ones from the VRChat SDK. After we add th all three of these items, open your avatar. Inside of the avatar descriptor, we're going to place each menu where it belongs. The expressions parameter in the expressions menu go under the expressions tab. The FX controller will go in the FX slot inside of playable layers. If your avatar already has expressions, parameters, and menus, you can keep using the same ones and just add to them. But if you don't already have them, you'll need to create them. Inside of the expressions parameters, we're going to create a new parameter. We want it to be a Boolean, which has two states, true and false, which is perfect for toggling particles on and off. We want to make sure that our default value is unchecked, meaning that it's false. Now we're going to give it a descriptive name. Although we have a good parameter, we have no way to interact with it. Now we're going to create a control inside of the expressions menu. Click on add control, change the type to toggle, and give it a name. If you want, you can also upload an icon. Now use the drop down to select your new parameter. 
If you decide to add more toggles, you don't have to create a new expressions menu every time. You can just add a new control below the existing controls. Finally, we have to tell your avatar what to do when the parameter is actually changed. Go to the Animator tab with your FX controller selected. Inside of the Parameters tab, create a new parameter of the same type as your parameter. Name it exactly the same, case sensitive. Back in the Layers tab, create a new layer below the base layer and name it something descriptive. Ensure that your layer's weight is set to 1, and then drag in both of your animations. Make sure that Particles Off is connected to Entry because we want it to be the default state. Then check on both of your animations and make sure that Right Defaults is off. Right Defaults can cause issues with some other add-ons, such as spring joints. Next, we're going to make transitions to connect our animations. Right-click on Particles Off, click on Make Transition, and then drag it over to Particles On. Click on then Transition to edit its settings. We only want Particles Off to change to Particles On when we tell it to, so we're going to add a condition. Set the condition so it says the transition will only occur when your parameter is true. Then, unchecked has exit time. Open the settings and set your transition duration to the desired amount. I like to keep in mind it's zero. Now we're going to repeat the steps with another transition back to particle off. Once again, we're going to edit the settings, add a condition, except make it so it will only go back to particles off when our parameter is false. Then uncheck has exit time and fix your transition duration as you did before. The last step is to go into your hierarchy, select your particle system, and disable it. Whatever is in the hierarchy will be the default state when you upload it to VRChat. So if you want your particles off by default, this needs to be off by default. Keep in mind, if you try and preview your animations inside of Unity, nothing will happen. But with this setup, I can guarantee that it does work inside of VRChat. All of the particles in my shop are highly optimized and can be used for both worlds and avatars. I'm going to quickly go over the basics of Unity's particle system so you can adjust it to your liking. Many of my particles are actually multiple particle systems. If you expand the parent object in the hierarchy, you can see the different particle systems that make up the whole particle effect. Currently, this particle is great for avatars because it spawns lots of particles when you move, but is not so great for worlds because it has very few particles standing still. We can change that by clicking on one of the particle systems, going down to the Emission tab, and messing with the rate settings. Rate over time refers to how many particles are spawned per time, whereas rate over distance talks about how many particles are spawned when you move the object. If we want this to be better for a world, we should adjust the rate over time to be higher. Additionally, we can scale up the size of the particle system. If you try and conventionally scale it up, it will increase the size of all particles. Instead, we need to adjust the size of the emitter shape. In the inspector, open the shape category and you can adjust the scale. Let's say I want this to be 10 by 10 by 10. Additionally, you can adjust the maximum amount of allowed particles at any given time. If you're using this on an avatar, try and keep the maximum amount small because more particles contributes to a worse performance rating. However, if you're using this on a world, it's pretty safe to increase the maximum amount of particles. The maximum amount of particles can be changed right here. Let's say I want it to be a thousand. Another helpful setting is simulation space. Currently, the particles are being simulated in the world, which means they can interact with the world, and if you move the particle system around, the particles will stay in their current position. However, if we change the simulation space to local, the entire particle system, including each individual particle, will move. This might be helpful for spell effects if you're trying to transform them. The last few settings that I'm going to talk about today are looping, gravity, and simulation speed. Looping refers to whether the particle will restart by itself once it ends. If looping is checked, the particles will play forever, but if it is unchecked, once the particle system stops, it won't continue until something else forces it to. If you don't want to mess with the particle's velocity, but you want it to go faster, it may be helpful to mess with the simulation speed. Here's what a fast simulation speed looks like. Here's what the default is, and here's what happens if you make it slower. Finally, depending on the thematic of your avatar, it may be useful to modify gravity. In this case, the default gravity modifier is zero. However, if we want the particles to float up, we can give it a negative value. If we want them to go down quickly, we can give them a positive value. 
For smaller objects, such as feathers and petals, it may be useful to use a fractional value, in this case, 0 0.05. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my tutorial. Uh, I really do hope that it was informative for you. Uh, while you have a moment, it would be great if you would check out my booth store, which has tons of free assets like particles and jewelry. Other than that, if you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it as fast as I can. Until the next one, signing off. Thank you.